Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're cutting up our 2012 Camaro SS. So our substitute radiator worked. We put 20 miles on it. And I sold the drivetrain. The buyer got to test drive it, made sure the trans shifted okay, even watched the video. But it's always best to see it in person. He did, now it's time to tear it out. Well, we're not off to a good start. Look at this genius that thinks the seats hold the drivetrain in. I mean, it's not like it's a Toyota or something. Actually, before we disconnect the battery, it's easy to move the seats around so we can unbolt them because once we take the drivetrain out, you have to jump the wires on the seats. So it's easier to do it now. Move them forward so we can unbolt them. And then we're gonna center them over the tracks, put them all the way down so that they're easier to maneuver and store. We're just gonna leave them in the car. I don't have one of those fancy warehouses. So we're just gonna store them in the car until somebody wants to buy them. But anything that's electrical, we're gonna use now. It'll save us a lot of time in the long run. So we're gonna put our top back up, because again, I have one of those fancy warehouses, so all our stuff's gonna be stored in our car. We'll put the windows up, Keep it all watertight. Ordinarily on cars like this with frameless windows, you put the windows down in the doors because they're much easier to store and the glass is safer when it's in the door. But I want it watertight more than I want to make it easier to store the door. So now we're going to trip the latch on the trunk. That way we don't have to worry about it relatching. We can close it, it'll still seal, but we don't have to try and open it up should it get latched. Pull all our stuff out of here so we can get to the battery. Pull out our fake spare tire. There's our battery cable that the fire department cut. Just a negative cable. That's all it is. Bolts right to the floor there. It was nice of them to only cut that one. It was easy to replace off that other car I had. Now we'll disconnect our battery. That battery is brand new. It was put in at the time of the engine. And I just happen to have a use for it. Now we can take off our custom hood latch. And we'll pop the hood. Disconnect our strut tower brace. Quite a bit of tension on it. You can see how it popped up. It's because the tower on the right side is pushed over. So maybe our realignment wasn't quite the factory specs. It was good enough for a test drive. Pull off the air intake. Unclick the mass airflow sensor. Take this whole assembly off in one piece. We'll unbolt the bottom of the air box. Slide it out of the way. We'll just at the battery cable that comes in from the back, a little junction box. And we'll take the junction box out because I also have a use for this. We'll unbolt our AC line. No need to discharge it. It already had a leak. Disconnect the vacuum line to the brake booster and the sensor that's on it. That hose goes to an elbow on the back of the intake. It is very commonly broken, so we're going to have to be careful not to break it when we're pulling this engine. Pop the cover out the fuse box. We'll separate the bottom, just a bunch of tabs. Pull the battery cable off of it so we can move it around. Toss the bottom in the pile because it's all broken. Now we can disconnect the front harness. There's three bolts in the top. That actually draws the plug in. So you just unbolt it. Pull them out at the same time. We'll disconnect this wiring harness. 
this, this wiring harness. And now I decided to take the other two plugs out of the back of the fuse box and just keep it separate. That way it's not in our way. Pull the plugs off of there. That's going with the engine. I'll just put it in a pile. Now we need to pull the exhaust so there's a brace underneath. I'm going to have to take that bolt all the way out because the hole is slotted. There's another brace back here. A lot of braces on this car. Hey look, some more braces. These are only for a convertible. And tie the subframe into the trunk floor. So we're just going to loosen them up. Now we're going to pull our custom cooling system out of the car. And let's take a minute to honor the real MVP of this whole ordeal, these hose clamps. That hose is a little bit too big, but because these hose clamps are the old style and not the stupid spring clamps, it was able to hold it enough that it didn't leak at all. As you can see, I just loosen it up a little bit and it starts pouring out of there. With every turn, it starts leaking. It didn't lose a drop while I was driving it though. You won't get that from your spring clamps. Sometimes the old technology is better. But then there's all the spring clamp advocates. But it applies even pressure. Well, let me tell you what I'm looking for in a clamp. Uh, no leaks. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was easy to use as well. So we're going to strain out our coolant. We'll reuse it. Only has 20 miles on it. We'll disconnect our upper radiator hose from the top of the water pump, which was actually our lower radiator hose on that radiator. It's cross flow design. Disconnect the other radiator hose. Our former lower to the current upper. Doing my best not to make a mess. It never works. I always end up making a mess. Now we can disconnect our heater hoses. Let it drain for a little bit, then we'll grab the other one. Just because I usually do things the right way doesn't mean I can't hack with the best of them. So this is what we had to do to make sure our Camaro was drivable. Enclave radiator, overflow. Uh, I believe this came out of a Chrysler minivan. I had to cut it to make it fit. I had a couple of heater hoses I had to tee off so I could get to the cooler line for the oil cooler. Um, that's made out of an enclave rear AC system. And then your typical bolt to plug off the steam port. A little bit of work, but hey, it got me 20 miles. Now we can disconnect the catalytic converters from the manifold. We get the front bolt with an extension and a socket. The back one, we need a swivel socket to get to it. Came right out. It's like they were only installed 4,000 miles ago or something. So now we'll disconnect the upstream O2 sensors. And on this side, we can see a little bit more. Pull our bolts out of there. Actually, 
studs with nuts, but they came out as bolts. We can disconnect our downstream O2s. And I went and found the gnome. So he's gonna give me a hand with the front. Let's slide it forward. The outlets actually go through the bumper, so we need to get it out of little holes. And we'll slide it back, set it on the ground, get it out of our way. We'll bolt those braces back up before I end up walking into them. There's a heat shield underneath the drive shaft. I'm gonna pull that down. We can disconnect our shift lever. And now we start pulling our drive shaft out. Part of the reason I took the shift lever off was so I could put it in neutral. We have to take it off anyway, but we'll do the back of the drive shaft first, spin it around, get to each bolt. Pry it loose. Just make sure it's ready to come out. Now we can unbolt the front. front has nuts on the other side, so we got to hold those with a wrench. Just keep spinning it around so we can get to them all. Pry this side loose. And now we can unbolt the center bearing. Drop the bolts on the ground so we have two free hands. And it slides out of there. Right, there's a vent tube that's bolted to the floor, so we'll take that down. We'll unbolt our trans mount from the little cross member. We're going to pull some of the bolts out of the cross member because we're going to have to do this later when the car's on the lift and we're on a creeper. So we're going to make sure they come out. Take this one all the way out. We'll just loosen up the other one. Give ourselves a little more room to work. Now our front subframe is no good. So to give myself a little more room to drop the engine down, we're gonna take a sawzall and cut this little piece out. I would just drop the whole subframe, but because it's so bent, I don't know if it's going to go back in there. And I want to be able to roll the car around. So we'll just cut this bracket off of there. Not going to matter. In the pile. And I can unbolt the bottom of our engine mounts. And we're going to unbolt our subframe. We're just going to loosen it up so it drops down. It'll move about half an inch. That gives us just a little bit more room on the firewall to save that little elbow on the back of the intake. Now we can unbolt the top of our engine mounts. They still aren't going to come out of there. And we have our reciprocating saw back. We're going to cut out the radiator support. That way we can just take this engine right out the front. It's garbage anyway. And my dump trailer needs to be filled, so I'm going to cut off as much stuff as we can. We can disconnect our power steering lines from the power steering pump. We already broke our line loose before and drained the system. The one that we had shortened the last time. And now we need to get the rest of it off of here. Pull our lines out. one ground wire on the passenger side. Got 
and now it's our fuel lines. I always need the fuel lines to last because here in the land of corruption and rust, if you end up having to use heat to get some bolts loose, you don't really want the gas laying around up there. So I make sure all the other bolts are out before we start pulling fuel lines out. So the ply line came off and our purge line. I take the purge valve and everything off so that when I am lifting it, I don't break it. So, we're ready to come out, I think. If not, we're gonna find out what I forgot the hard way by testing the tensile strength of whatever wires or hoses there are. So we're gonna unbolt the cross member for the trans, then we're gonna lower it down a little bit. Then we'll lift the engine up a little bit, see when we get those engine mounts out. And yes, that is a seat belt I am using, and they are definitely strong enough to lift an engine in trans. I used to use chains, but I forgot to take them off a lot of times and end up giving them away with the engine. So now, when you purchase an engine from me, you get a free seat belt. So we're going to pry it up a little bit, see if we can get off the engine mounts. Still trying not to break that elbow on the back of the intake. It helps when we make faces, things don't break then. The studs for the engine mounts are like two and a half inches long. There's not really two and a half inches of space to get the things out of there. We got one side out. Usually makes the other side a little easier. And the other side's out. So now we got some room. So now we can lower it down a little bit. So we're not sitting on the firewall. Pull at the back of the trans down. That way it comes out on more of an angle. Take the rear cross member out and reposition the jack so it's just under the trans. And we'll pry the engine out. We need the oil pan past the rack and pinion. Once we do, it's pretty much clear sailing. Wasn't sure how much it was going to tilt with the weight of the trans on the back of the engine. Wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. We'll back it out a little bit. And hopefully we didn't forget anything. Doesn't look like it. So we'll keep going. In case you were wondering, this is one of those new forklifts that's operated by voice command. That's where our vent tube was going to get snagged on something. Just set it up on top of the trans itself. And we're totally free. So we can back it out of here. Now we'll pull the gas pedal out, put all of our stuff together, get it ready to ship. But until it leaves, we're going to throw it on our handy little engine cart so that we don't need the forklift to move it everywhere. Because I need the forklift. You know, got some frames to straighten some stuff to weld, and I might want to climb around on it a little bit later. Now with that pesky engine out of the way, we can see just how bad our frame rails were. They buckled quite a bit in front of the subframe. They're also back buckled behind the subframe. You can see our subframe has collapsed on that side compared to the driver's side. And I did say you couldn't straighten the frame rails, 
where people think that that means that it's not possible. Yes, it is possible. Is it going to be as strong? No, it's high strength steel and you can't section it. So it must be replaced if you're doing it the right way. If you're just a hack, ah, section it and put it on there. But make sure that you're driving it when you crash it the next time. So for those of you that don't know, I have my own private little junkyard. That's where the Camaro's headed. Kind of roll it off the back of the trailer and into its little spot. Where it will live out the rest of its days. Until it ends up in the back of the dump trailer. So once I sell everything that's valuable in this car, I'll let you know how much money I made in this whole project. It might take a little while parts don't just run out the door like everyone seems to think. It takes patience to make money. I have plenty of patience, just waiting on the money. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.